Hello, I'm Arvultos, and today I will be responding to an idea that I see very frequently uh, among certain bread tubers, but in particular, I'd like to talk about uh, this one in particular based on a video, Why Classic Liberals Decay into Fascism by um, uh, Reading Radical, previously known as uh, Radian. Um, and what I want to talk about specifically regarding that is that generally speaking, I do not see that classical liberalism decays into fascism. And uh, I, I do believe that there are a number of presuppositions uh, made by Reading Radical in this video that are not entirely accurate. Now, for example, there's three points that are put out in this video as uh, being the uh, sort of important tenets of a classical liberal's worldview. One, uh, that capitalism is a meritocracy and good. Two, that freedom and, pers and personal uh, responsibility are important. And three, that all people are created equal. Now, on the first point, I would like to point out that uh, capitalism, although it, it can be considered meritocratic, and of course there are different perspectives on uh, whether or not there should be equality of opportunity and things like that. However, I do not see capitalism as being something that is ideologically linked with ca with classical liberalism. Uh, whenever you read um, many classical liberal authors, it's they don't really make a central point that capitalism is something that they consider to be something that is highly important per se. Now, that being said, if we do take classical liberalism as implying that the government uh, deinstitutionalizes uh, many social and economic factors, then, of course, it makes sense to say that if uh, we define capitalism as um, private ownership of the means of production. Well, if the ownership of the means of production uh, is not uh, public or state ownership, um, I'd like to make a distinction there between public and state uh, because not all countries have um, a an idea of popular sovereignty, although it is popular among uh, certain classical liberals. But anyway, uh, back on that idea, the, the other component being the idea of ownership, and therefore there are certain privileges that an owner would be able to enact. And of course, uh, if it is deinstitutionalized, then those privileges would largely belong to the owner. And therefore, there is private ownership, and therefore classical liberalism does indeed lead to capitalism not as something that is emphatic, but rather as something that is consequential to taking a laissez-faire uh, or hands-off uh, approach on economics. That if the government is not highly involved in economics, it makes sense that therefore there should be private ownership of the means of production because the government is not involved. Now, that being said, there are ideas wherein in capitalism, in, sorry, in liberalism, individuals outside of a government would theoretically be able to get together and organize a system of exchanges which are not necessarily capitalistic and perhaps collectivize ownership outside of a government and therefore without means of coercion and uh, such things exist there are cooperatives and and things like that so to say that classical liberalism is uh, fully capitalistic is i i believe an overstatement so on the second point freedom and personal responsibility well, of course, uh, if we are t classical liberalism is, of course, in favor of uh, freedom um, and personal responsibility would, I guess, be the consequence of having personal freedom, because if the state 
is not um, responsible for your actions, then you yourself are responsible for the actions. And on the third point, all people are created equal. Now, when classical liberals say this, what they do not mean is that every single person should treat every other person equally uh, because of this. That's not what they mean, because that would be a situation that would require coercion and therefore would be very illiberal. What they mean is that the government should not be making these arbitrary distinctions that are, of course, mentioned in the video. Uh, not that individuals outside of the government should be forbidden from making such, such uh, distinctions in a uh, complete way. Now, of course, there are different viewpoints. Uh, there are some individuals who are indeed in favor of uh, removing I, things like freedom of speech uh, for racists, removing that. Uh, and, of course, those individuals would generally not be considered to be classical liberals. But anyway, the argument that is made in the video by Reading Radical is that uh, the way that is paved for the classical liberal to become a fascist is the rejection of the third point that all people are created equal. Now, of course... Uh, and, of course, the justification for the uh, rejection of that point is that in the race of life, you see that individuals are indeed unequal in a very uh, literal way. But, of course, when, when they say that people are created equal, what they don't mean is that individuals have the same material situations, but rather that individuals are equal as humans and therefore should have equal rights which is different from saying that they should have an equal start in a situation. And of course, uh, it's it's not really the classical liberal view to, to view uh, the economic interactions as uh, of an individual as participation in a race where some individuals might get a head start and others don't. That's not really the liberal view. The classical liberal view is that your economic uh, place in the cosmos is one that you yourself should decide. And therefore, whether or not you view that as a, as a race is really up to you. Uh, you could view it as a race. You could also view it as a team effort. And it would not be wrong in liberalism to view it that way. And there are, in, there are even individuals that choose not to be economically active. And those individuals in a liberal society, there are, in, in fact, in the United States, for example, there are hundreds, uh, perhaps even thousands of people that are homeless and are unemployed and that get by fine uh, through the charity of others. And I'm not saying that this is the situation for all homeless individuals or for all individuals who are unemployed. I'm just saying that in a liberal society, that this has proven for some to be a viable uh, strategy of life. And therefore, uh, the idea that it is uh, essentially just a, a race where if you lose, it's your fault is uh, not really true because charity exists and liberalism says nothing about limiting how individuals practice charity but uh, uh, the, the only limitation on it in classical liberalism is that uh, the government shouldn't excessively uh, go into privileging individuals for charity um, in a more institutional way. So that would be a more classical liberalist position. So anyway, if you then go to the idea that individuals are not equal in a physical sense, uh, which of course is not disputed by classical liberalists, then the, I, the whole uh, real point of the argument is not really entirely coherent because uh, what we see at that point is that those individuals who are unequal could be unequal for a wide variety of reasons. Now, of course, uh, 
reading radical characterizes this realization of inequality um, and the acceptance of that uh, that saying that the inequality is in fact a good thing um, and, and that individuals who are unequal deserve to be in their state because of uh, this or that is a form of bigotry now to be fair there are individuals who do believe in inequality um, and and also uh, have a favoritism for capitalism um, but uh, who might take a more paternalistic stance rather than a survival of the fittest stance and there are individuals that believe in uh, ironing out the wrinkles and trying to create perfect equality in society and so there, there's all sorts of different ways that people handle this so the idea that there is any one single way that a classical liberal easily slips into fascism is really unfounded and i would really like to see some studies that actually demonstrate that this is something that occurs as a natural realization of flaws in classical liberalism. Now, I personally am not exactly a classical liberalist. I, I really have um, in invented my own viewpoint, but that's not really what I'm going to get into. But anyway, moving on to the idea of fascism. Now, you might ask, well, how, how would you then from that become a fascist? Because fascism is not simply a, a form of uh, institutionalizing these divisions between people. It's not simply a, a form of uh, racist governance or a, a sort of predatory capitalism where you have an in-group preference. That's not what fascism is. Fascism has some very specific... Uh, aspects and very specific goals, social and economic goals, and it's very important to make that distinction. And I think it's also very important to make a distinction between uh, fascism and, uh, let's say, n uh, national socialism, because those two things are sort of apples and oranges, quite different, actually, if you uh, get in into the insides of that. And, of course, this, of course, makes me question, really, whether Reading Radical is familiar about these differences, because uh, Reading Radical uh, referred to a friend that was descending into fascism at one point, but also mentioned uh, neo-Nazism, which, which would be different because, as I mentioned, fascism and national socialism are actually very different viewpoints. And you might say, well, what if not classical liberalism. What viewpoints would fascism more likely come out of? What, what is the alternative uh, answer to this? Well, I actually think that fascism is more likely to arise from socialism. Uh, not necessarily any particular type of socialism, but uh, more generally taking the idea, the, the core values of socialism, and taking then into account the failures that socialism has had and then synthesizing that with uh, an in-group preference. And that's when, when you really get uh, fascism. Because if you ever read the fascist manifesto and, and the communist manifesto, and for, let's say, the, the liberalists will take uh, Thomas Paine's common sense, because all three documents... A call for particular uh, actions and uh, a particular viewpoints. What you end up is, you, when you read these, is that one is not like the others. And it's not the Communist Manifesto, it's Thomas Paine's common sense. And though I may not agree with all the points that Thomas Paine makes, I do have to say that if you actually take a look at the, uh, the Fascist Manifesto from, um, I think it's... Uh, the, the early 20th century, what you have is a situation where they're in favor of workers' rights, uh, increasing a, a minimum wage, and uh, reducing work hours, giving unions a place in, uh, in, the, in, 
in having an economic voice that is equal to that of the corporations and the business owners rather than inferior to that and and all sorts of other things that would generally be associated nowadays with socialism and what we have is a situation where of course reading radical mentions that uh, capitalists uh, or classical liberals are very frequently anti-unions however what we have to realize is that fascists are fundamentally pro-unions, just like uh, syndicalists are, and uh, various types of socialism, and Karl Marx, for example. So, in fact, the fascist economic system is dependent on the existence of large uh, labor and trade unions that govern economic sectors in, in a very centralized way. So, ultimately... Uh, and, and if you look at Benito Mussolini, before he was a fascist, uh, as the founder of fascism, before he was a fascist, he was a socialist. So what you, what you end up with is that they have a common rhetoric about workers, and, and you, you see the same with the Nazis as well, with the uh, German Workers' Party. They have a common rhetoric relating to workers, a common rejection of capitalist principles um, regarding... Uh, laissez-faire uh, liberalism where uh, instead the economy needs to work towards particular social goals and particular equalities for uh, people rather than uh, allowing that to work out on its own and ultimately what you have is a situation where fascists uh, national socialists and communists have in fact more in common with each other than they do with classical liberalists so the, the question then becomes, how is it that the, all these bread tubers are coming around and telling everyone that somehow classical liberalism is the road to fascism, when just as equally it could be the road to uh, communism, Marxism, uh, Dengism, uh, national socialism, under the same criteria because uh, if, if the accusation that some make is that oh it gives people a voice well it gives socialists a voice too so <laughs> you know it's it equals the playing field and it gives liberalists a voice as well and so ultimately what you have is um, what people call a marketplace of ideas where people can hear different ideas and decide which ideas they prefer now of course what we also have to realize is that since fascism is contrary to the principles of classical liberalism, it of course doesn't make sense that a classical liberalist would prefer to ally with a fascist as opposed to, let's say, uh, a center-right or center-left uh, individual or centrists or uh, conservatives or other individuals who might not be as opposed to the ideas of liberalism. So ultimately, that's that's what I've really got to say. So tell me what you think. Do you think I should make more scripted videos? Now, there are certain elements of Reading Radicals video that I didn't mention, um, largely because I intend to address them from a different video. Uh, I'm, I intend to make response videos pointing out flaws in um, in the series about so-called crapitalism, about the problems with capitalism, and etc. Et I intend to make videos about that. Uh, you can support me on Patreon. I need to really update my information on that uh, or you can uh, watch on BitChute as well um, if you'd like to contact me about anything uh, please do so if you'd like to co-host uh, shows with me if you'd like to uh, co-commentary with me I would be happy to do so as well so thank you all for watching and I uh, hope you're doing well uh, good wishes to you uh, peace on earth and goodwill toward men eh so thank you all for watching and i will be seeing you all next time on a over and out